Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and today we're going to be setting up for a July 2018 in my bullet journal. But before we jump into that, I figured we'd just have a quick flip through of June. So as you remember from my last monthly plan with me, for June I was going for this cloud, dream-esque kind of style pink theme. On the pages of my monthly setup, I used my Tombow Dual Brush markers and my Pentel Aquash water brush to do a kind of watercolored effect on each of the cloud pictures. So we had my cover page, my monthly log, my habits and steps trackers, my social media scheduler, my two lines a day page, my JC Doodle spread, and then we were right on into the weekly pages. As you may remember, at the start of June I was actually moving into my first house. Because of this, I didn't really touch my bullet journal for the first one or two weeks of June, which is why some of these spreads are looking a little bit barren. As I talked about in my last video, for July I'm actually starting in my new bullet journal, which is the Scribbles That Matter. I'm really excited to get started in this one because I haven't actually tried a Scribbles That Matter notebook before. Before I hand you over to the time lapse, just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's setup will be linked in the description box below. To start with, I'm going in with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the size F to rule up the lines of my splash page. For this month I've decided that my theme is going to be triangles, so I'm drawing some different sized triangles on this front page, some of which are overlapping, to surround the central text. Although I typically like to do one colour for my monthly theme, for July I'm trying something a little different and using a combination of five. These colours include a nice shade of olive green, charcoal, burgundy and two other pink tones. For my overlapping triangles, any section where the triangles actually overlap is coloured in with a darker colour. So you'll see the points where all three triangles overlap are in the charcoal colour, whereas where only two overlap I've got the burgundy, and the parts where none of them overlap are just in those lighter shades of pink. I used my Faber-Castell pen again to do the title for the page. I found that as I was writing this, my hand was on a slight angle, which meant that the ink came out thinner than I had first intended it to. To fix this up, I just went in with the same pen and thickened up some of those strokes. I'd also like to take this moment to apologise for any background noise you might hear through this plan with me. At the time of recording my voiceover, quite a lot of commotion was going on outside, including a semi-storm and a lot of passing vehicles. When my cover page was finished, it was time to get started on my setup for the monthly log. I continued the triangle theme by putting rows of triangles at the top and bottom of the page. You may remember this design from one of my weekly setups back in March. If you can't remember, or if you're keen to check it out, I'll leave a link to that video in the cards at the top. Using the same pen, I also started to rule out the calendar that I'm going to be using for my monthly log. Because in July I'll be on school holidays, I know I won't need a lot of space to write down the weekly appointments that I typically have for school. Given this, I'm taking the opportunity to bring back my memory style calendar that I had back in January. Although typically I like to do calendar layouts starting on a Monday, because July starts on a Sunday, I wouldn't actually have had enough room to put in the additional line needed. So I decided instead to start this one on a Sunday. After finishing off the black outlining, I then went in with my five Tombow colours again to colour in the triangles that were at the top and the bottom of the page. 
I used a repeating pattern of burgundy, olive, pink, charcoal, and then the remaining pink colour. Instead of writing out the calendar numbers, I instead used some small clear stickers. Given the size of these stickers, they are actually quite difficult to work with. Despite this though, I do quite like the way that it turned out. Although you can't really see it on screen, after this I decided to put a sticker down the bottom of my to-do list section. It says, life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And I think this is a really nice sentiment to remember, especially when starting a new journal. Personally, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that the start of my new journal is as perfect as possible. Putting that much pressure on oneself really isn't healthy, so it's nice to have the little reminder. With the monthly log finished, it was time to get stuck into my habits and steps trackers. Because I wanted to keep the same running theme of the triangles at the top and the bottom of the page, I had to change the placing of my title. Although typically I like having these at the top of the page, I decided to put them running down the side. This way I'd still have space for 31 days vertically down the page. I've really been enjoying trying up different styles of steps and habit trackers over the past couple of months. Although I've really enjoyed the concentric ring and concentric square style trackers, I know that for July I just want to take it back to basics and do one of my regular vertical style ones. I find that colouring in the box associated for each habit on each day is a lot easier when I have a really clear outline. So I decided to rule up this grid in full using my Pit Artist pens in the sizes S and F. I used the thicker size to do any of the lines that went around the border, and then the thinner size to do any of the internal lines. At this stage I'm not sure how many habits I want to track, or even which habits I want to track. So I've given myself space for 5 different habits, which could easily be turned into 10 by splitting those columns in half. I'm using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the size S to do the numbers for this page, and then using my Stettler Triplus Fine Liners to write down the initial for each day of the week. For the weekdays I used my olive green Stettler, whereas for the weekends I used a pastel pink. I used this same style to write down the numbers and the days of the week for my steps tracker as well. Instead of using the Pit Artist Pen to do the full grid for the steps tracker, I instead used a light grey Stettler Triplus Fineliner to indicate the boundary between each thousand steps. This style of tracker essentially works like a bar graph, where each of those boxes is representing a thousand steps. Because I want to be a little bit more precise than just rounding my daily step total to the nearest thousand, what I do at the end of the day is check my Fitbit for the exact number of steps that it has recorded that I have walked. From this, I read across the row for the day that I'm in, and put a vertical line to represent the number of steps that I actually achieved. I then use my Tombow Dual Brush Marker to colour in the bar up to that line. By the end of the month, the coloured bars on the tracker represent the exact number of steps I did on each of those days, as recorded by my Fitbit. The next spread I had was my social media calendar. As I've said previously, I'm really enjoying the way this has been working out, so I'm not changing up anything for this month. Earlier this week, I got a request on one of my other videos to go into a bit more detail as to how I use this calendar to plan out the things I'm posting for social media. If this is something you'd be interested in as well, let me know in the comment section below. Although I'm likely going to save more talk about this for another video, the general idea is that anything that's related to Instagram goes on the left hand side, and anything related to Facebook, YouTube, or my growth goes on the right hand side. For the Instagram and Facebook sections, there's a row for each day of the week to write down or plan the things that I want to post on each of those accounts. For my YouTube section, as you guys know, I post videos on Thursdays and Sundays. So in my YouTube section there's a row for each of those days where I can record the video that I'm going to be posting. I'd be really curious to know if anybody else tracks the things that they're posting on social media. If you have a particular way to do this and wouldn't mind sharing, put it down in the comment section so we can check it out. I continued with the same style of numbering for this page as well. So using the Pit Artist Pen to do the numbers, and then the Triplus Fine Liners to do the initials for each day.
With all of the outlining done, I then went in with those Tombos again to do the colouring of those triangles. My last spread for this setup was that for the JC Doodle Challenge. For June, our prompt list was all about patterns that can be turned into Zentangles. I've been really enjoying looking at what other people have produced from this prompt list and also completing it myself. Zentangles are a total favourite of mine. At this stage, I don't have any ideas as to what I want to do for the JC Doodle Challenge in July, so if you have any ideas, chuck them in the comment section so I can see them. As I'm not sure what the prompt list is going to be for next month, I left this page relatively empty and just included those triangle motifs at the top and bottom of the page. I again used my Tombow Jewel Brush markers to colour them in using the same repeating pattern. Alrighty, and that's where we're going to leave it for today. So we have my splash page for July, my monthly log, my habits and steps tracking pages, my social media scheduler, and space for my doodles. For watching. If you have any thoughts, comments or feels, please do leave them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. And until next time, bye!